Wow. Hello, everybody. Has it been a good day so far? I hope so. It's lovely to meet all of you. My name is Viola Llewellyn, and I am the co-founder of an African fintech platform called Ovamba. It was formed five years ago by myself and my co-founder, Marvin Cole, to solve the problem that African businesses have for, with access to capital in order to grow their businesses. And in the five years that we've been doing this, we've developed some rather innovative products and solutions. But today, I really want to talk to you about what it means to build this new idea of Africa in the new tech democracy. And there are players like myself and many others who have taken a very honorable role in fixing this. So here we go. Now, every time democracy rears its head, it's usually because there's been a moment of chaos. And for some people, they understand that chaos provides an opportunity. Democracy is often followed after a time of some sort of turmoil, when there's been unrest or gaps in the market, and where there's been confusion, or in this case, a desire to create technologies, to create tools, to help us to become the best versions of ourselves and to help other people to become the best versions of themselves. The idea of democracy relates to a gathering of like-minded people, ideas and create structures that will serve everybody on an equal footing in an equal way. Africa's post-colonial experiences are very well known by most people, but in case you're not aware of it, Africa has suffered very greatly from the inability of individuals to chart their own destination and create stable democracies. But now that we're in the fourth industrial revolution, I think that that is about to change. So it's a mixed story. And I often ask myself the question, what if? How would we, as a continent, what would we have looked like if our history had not been interrupted? What would our democracy look like if those bright, smart minds had not been extracted from the continent and had been given the, the greatest gift of all, time to create innovation and time for those innovations to turn into some of the long history companies like you have here in, in Japan? What could our story be today without the commercial, societal, and innovative disruptions that we've experienced and that still occur? In this new era of democracy, everything has leapt into the hands of individuals and users and out of the hands of foreign governments and local governments, who I don't think have had as much of a good time with growing the private sector, where some of us believe is the destiny and the cradle of democracy in the new fourth industrial revolution. This new era of democracy is exciting, at least I think so and watching young people get their hands on all of these new pieces of technology to innovate is something that most of us are gonna stand witness to as history begins to reinvent itself for the sake of democracy. So when we see what others outside see as a continent of chaos, we see a continent of great opportunity to recreate ourselves in the image of what we think technology requires. And in today's world, the driver is the chaos, and the handheld app is a powerful tool. So welcome to Africa's innovation era. And me, Viola, I dare to be your host on today's journey. So as I said, Marvin Cole and myself built this company. And we have to build our future from scratch every single day, idea by idea, surmounting objection after objection. But why and what are we building? The future is waiting to be discovered. And in our case for Africa, the future has arrived a little bit early. And I think in some respects, governments have been caught unawares and so have individuals. And this is because of Africa's leapfrog growth story, which many of you are probably already aware of. We bypassed landlines and we bypassed desktops and we bypassed banking and so much more. The opportunities are there, and growing the youth and the middle class is a great area by which we tend to focus. Being able to satisfy the tech savvy and the tech hungry, and monetizing intellectual property, the ideas of all of the individuals that graduate from the tech hubs that are springing up all over the continent. 
It's an opportunity to innovate on what has already existed and what has already been created, but to make it better. This is the true type of valuation, value creation that we're excited about, the type that investors are interested in funding. It all speaks to the current market, which has all of these great market imperfections and the growing appetite of the, the burgeoning middle class and their appetite for consumerism. And it speaks to a multi-trillion dollar opportunity across a number of industries and sectors. The accelerated consumerism and the need for solutions makes for the perfect opportunity for companies like Ovamba and opportunities to partner with Japanese companies that understand what it means to operate within emerging markets with double digit returns. It all leads to very huge gains and innovation is needed for all of these sectors that you see here and even more of those that we haven't mentioned or even thought about. So, Africa, and this is an image that most people don't often get to see, is physically way more imposing than you could have ever imagined. That little part there in yellow is actually Japan. And it's bigger, and it's not one that's familiar with you, but let me give you a few of the stats. Right now we have 1.2 billion human beings on the planet, oh, sorry, on the continent. And by 2014, that number is gonna hit 2.5 billion. That is a very large addressable market of individuals looking for solutions or looking to create solutions and express themselves creatively. And of that 2.5 billion, most are gonna be engaging in entrepreneurism and they will want to move into middle-class consumership. Africa is gonna count for 40% of the global population growth over the next 40 years. And this is a landmass that is still underpopulated with the lowest population density in the world. 67 cities are gonna have more than a, billion, a million people in them. That makes it far more urbanized than India. And the diversity is big, not just the fact that there are more and more women leading tech and financial companies, but the diversity amongst those individuals that don't conform to what could be considered colonial norms. Religion, we have more than 400 million who are Muslims and need different types of products and services. We have languages, more than 2,000 distinct languages on the continent. Where I'm from in Cameroon, I was born in the UK, but my parents are Cameroonian. We have 262 different tribes, 262 different languages, for which we actually had to create a natural language chatbot in order to deliver a democratic form of financial access to services. Now, I do know that here at Slush, there are probably VCs. This is an unfortunately low number. And if you truly want to diversify a portfolio for great returns, this 0.3% is not cutting it. And I suggest that you quickly find great African operators like myself. Yes, I consider myself one of those. And come partner with us and find out how you can start to diversify a portfolio that reflects the direction that Africa is going in. Now, I was told earlier today with new friends I've made here in Japan that change can be a little bit difficult to navigate. Well, in the case of Africa, change often breeds fear, not just for individuals in the continent, but for those who are watching us. Africa changes very differently. And when we adopt technology, it's very rapid, it's very sticky. Take a look at mobile wallets, remittances, telemedicine, or us, Ovamba, how we've embedded asset ownership into our fintech solution to help grow small and businesses and small enterprises. Within that sector of Africa, that has often been held hostage by traditional banking systems. But we had to change that. We've used technology to drive growth by leapfrogging over the typical capital distribution models of banks. Different can be a little hard to understand, and it's hard to communicate if the people you're communicating with believe everything from a Western standpoint and a Western standard. And I often tell people, if you were to judge Africa it would, by Western standards, it's a little bit like saying that fish don't climb trees, therefore they're useless at climbing, but that's not what we're supposed to be. Once upon a time, BRICS was a scary idea for investment, but then it became the standard choice and you were considered smart if you picked BRICS as an investment opportunity. And once upon a time, made in Japan or made in Hong Kong, was considered a little bit scary and maybe even controversial. 
When the rest of the world is adhering to a global standard created by a few world superpowers, it is very difficult for people like myself and businesses like mine to stand out and be culturally accepted because you're used to something else. And it is very difficult to express yourself when your history, your culture, and your ambitions have been hijacked and held hostage by someone who does not belong in your narrative, but seems to have developed the power to hold it hostage. Think about how freely technology can bring transparency, and you begin to see the powerful opportunity to open doors, understand, collaborate with other people. In fact, if you're talking about change, once upon a time, having black women leading tech and finance companies globally was not the norm. In the same way that people have forgotten about the efforts of Marie Curie, who discovered radium. Well, here we are again with history repeating itself. Or people like um, Katherine Johnson, the black mathematician who helped the American space race. If you haven't seen the movie Hidden Figures, I suggest you see it. This is a brand new narrative. And change is the new norm. And without change, there is no growth, not for anyone. In fact, I would defy you to argue with me and say that you need to conform to be accepted. Because to that, I say absolutely not you need to be able to chart your own destiny. So our African ecosystem has reacted to the change. And if you want, you can think about our, content, our continent almost as a continental level of AI. It's a system that has learned to evaluate itself and respond and teach itself based on inputs. And in our case in particular, we are adapting in response to both negative and positive stimuli, whether it's from the media, individuals themselves, governments, or when we sit down in front of investors and they think we don't understand African risk, and we're trying to explain to you, listen to us, not to the data and the text that you've collected, because there isn't very much of it, and we're one of the few people who have created it. Where the world believes there's war, strife, political instability, there is actually growth and change going on and great minds are building this future. We own our own narrative, we reject generalizations, and we certainly reject the idea of charity. We need to be able to grow on our own in this new, this new democracy. So understanding and sharing is the power tool of democracy. If you think about things like blockchain, distributed ledgers, cryptocurrencies, sharing economies, the absence of a central governing third party to control trust, that's what the new democracy looks like, and it is so powerful. Look at how distance becomes irrelevant. Telemedicine, for example, communications, language chatbots, fintech, mobile wallets, mobile money, being able to do business with each other from anywhere in the world at any point in time. One of my favorites is the ability to share ideas and collaborate to solve common problems despite who we are, where we are, or what we look like. It takes the bias out of being able to make judgments about people and whether or not your elements of success are going to be verified. The old idea of winning has changed in a new democracy. It's no longer binary about winning and losing. It's about those people who choose to dare to create democracies where everybody has a chance to win together, or at the very least, to thrive. And in the best scenario, winning together creates so much more peace. And being able to win is a human right. Everybody has a right to thrive. Everybody has the right to win. And in the tech age, I think this is something that we will be able to, to verify and to confirm and to provide to all citizens. The democratic equalizer, though, is time. We all fight for time. We, time to eat, to sleep, to grow, to get into, get out of relationships time to swipe right or swipe left on Tinder, and the time to develop and test innovation, time for the masses to adopt ideas and join the collective, and how we use time as a marker for creating value. We either save time or create time with every app and technology that we innovate, and it is a golden principle in the new tech era. Preventing innovation is the equivalent of holding entire communities hostage to lack of growth and progress. And in fact, I think it should be created as a crime. Where we, where we would have been if we had been able to control our own destiny as a continent, goodness knows where, and it's something that keeps me awake every night. But in the next 10 to 20 years, Africa could quite easily be a, a global market leader if we can only find a way 
to use time wisely and innovate wisely to solve social issues and create impact. Every time we sit down and talk about the great countries of this world, Japan always comes up and it's respected very greatly around the world and it is a real honor to be here. And I know that most of Africa looks to Japan as a potential partner. All of the companies I see behind me, and I know the dates might not be so right, they had the opportunity and the advantage of time and the ability to maintain stability, impact economies, and to maintain relevance in periods of time that span more than 100 years. We want the same thing that you do. Africans want to go into the future and be relevant, to be able to come out and impact you and export our ideas and our technology and our innovation. We do not want to continue to be the recipients of, of overlays of technologies. We want to collaborate. Now, our company in particular, Ovamba, has been on this battlefield for the last five years. And I feel that I am a glorious general. And I really feel that I am helping to be an architect of a future that in my lifetime, I might not see. But we shape this ecosystem and we deploy apps, we interrupt our customers. Customers need interrupting every single day in our, in our economy. We encourage, we adopt, we adapt, we co-opt our participants and we engage and disrupt financial institutions. We beg them to come join us and be enabled. If not, we're gonna eat their lunch. And I know that we can. We address the poor narratives. We want people to see Africa very differently. We shirk charity. We mold our staff and we demand standards and excellence. We push for innovation and automation to create a fair agnostic level playing field where it doesn't matter if you're man, female, black, white, gay, straight, or none of the above. Africa is waiting for this future. And with the level playing field and the tools that we're creating, it will help us to, for Africa to meet its best cultural reality. Do you know that they're still using banking and risk credit models that come from other countries that have got nothing to do with our own ethnic individuality? It makes no sense. That's not democratic. Democracy survives best when it's led by people, for the people, to help address the needs of everyday people. And technology is going to help us win the hearts and minds of the people so that we can all change together. Innovation, technology, this is where the new democracy is. This is the fourth industrial revolution. And I do believe that women, Africans, and individuals will lead this. This is a new democracy that is dawning, and this ain't your granddaddy's Africa. In fact, it never was. But I want you to remember that you saw me and that you heard me today, and that I said that there was a continent of individuals just like you looking to join you, looking to collaborate with you, and hoping that we can join a revolution where what we look like doesn't matter, where we all win together. Thank you, Slush. Thank you for listening. And I hope that you all enjoy the rest of the conference. Have a great day.